now facing backlash from black faith leaders over its, its apolitical stance on Georgia's new voting law. The retailer has 90 stores throughout its home state of Georgia. It employs roughly 27,000 people. In a statement to Fox News, the company says it is going to, quote, continue to underscore our statement that all elections should be accessible, fair, and secure, and support broad voter participation, and to continue to work to ensure our associates in Georgia and across the country have the information and resources to vote. Dagan McDowell, the company takes a, a, a stance that everyone else agrees with, but it doesn't attack Georgia's law, and it gets attacked anyway. Right. I choose the walk over the talk. And what, I'm ta what I am speaking about is Home Depot has a large initiative to ensure that its associates, the people who work for the company in Georgia, just specifically, register to vote. I'll, this is some information from Home Depot. They have a get out the vote initiative, 15,500 voter registrations among its associates, 1,800 associates. Um, they work to help uh, allow them to volunteer at polling locations across the country, 600 tech workers volunteers in Atlanta to support tech and cybersecurity issues related to the election. And then Home Depot even donated more than 9,000 plexiglass dividers in Georgia to help polling safety requirements. So what is Home Depot's worried about the people who work there and the customers in the community at large. So a statement, so right. some people might be upset with a statement, but I would side with what they do in action rather than what they do yes. in putting out a statement trying to appease, I, you know, I don't know, left the left well, that's wing. that's the thing. It's, it, it, that's right. I mean, that's spot on because that's all it is, appeasing these loudmouths who are just driving a narrative that's not even true. Maybe Home Depot actually read the law in Georgia and recognized there's absolutely nothing wrong with it, Mark Tepper. But because they yeah. weren't going along with the loudmouth narrative to muddy up Georgia and the GOP ahead of the Senate race next year, they get attacked by the left. It's absolutely outrageous. Home Depot did everything right. They did, yeah. So, look, we own Home Depot. I love the company. Great management team. Everything about them is great. You got a red hot housing market. Um, so, great company. And I prefer when companies stay out of politics. I mean, Home Depot exists to serve their stakeholders and they treat their employees very well. They're doing a great job. They don't exist to play political games with, with groups on the left, right? And all of this complaining about Georgia's voting laws, it, it's, it's irritating. It's meant to provide everybody with an opportunity to vote while maintaining the integrity of the election by making sure everyone votes once. You need an ID. It's not yeah. a big deal. If you're financially disadvantaged, you just got 1400 bucks dropped in your lap. A state ID in Ohio, where I live, is 10 bucks. A voter ID in Georgia is free. So don't tell me you can't afford an ID. It's all narrative. Well, it's all narrative, and, you know, it's really a strategy. Herschel Walker was on the show on Sunday, made such a great point that the left is trying to muddy up Georgia and the GOP going into the Senate race in 2022 so that Raphael Warnock keeps that seat. That's what this is about. This is about the majority in the Senate, the majority for Democrats, and that is why companies have to be very careful to ensure that they understand what they're talking about before they just jump on that bandwagon. That's what we saw with so many companies. Major League Baseball really hurt the city of Atlanta and Georgia in general by taking that all-star game out. I just want to say a word about uh, Home Depot. Um, that's what this little article was about on O News. <laughs> um, when this thing first started and um, everybody was wearing uh, face coverings, um, I'm not boasting about this. I mean, I, if, if people feel com better with the face coverings and stuff on and uh, that makes them feel safe, then I'm, I'm all for that. You know, people should be able to make their own choices. Um, I tried one time to wear one and I could not stop coughing. And I talked to the doctor and he said that some people just cannot wear them because I do have some breathing problems caused from prescription medicine many years ago. I mean, I breathe fine, but I, I do have some breathing problems if somebody's got their hand over my mouth or a face covering up tight against it. So I've, if the times I've had to go to the doctor, I just, I take one and just kind of hold it up over my mouth, but not stuck on me. But I've never one time worn one in a store or a restaurant or 
anywhere else. And for the most part, no one's ever pushed it or tried to force me to. Uh, I went to Best Buy oh, a few weeks ago, and I hadn't been there in years. I used to get my computers there and stuff, so I was looking for a computer. And uh, that's I was met at the door, you know, uh, here's a face covering. I said, no, thank you. I can't wear them. I have medical issues. Well, we have these plastic face guards. I said, do I have to? She said, yes, ma'am. I said, goodbye. I will never shop at Best Buy again. Uh, the only other time that I, it was very forceful was at a McDonald's. This was probably back in, oh, I'd say last uh, August, July or August. And we were in our travel trailer, in our truck, and so our little puppies were hungry and I, I wanted to get them a hamburger patty. And uh, I, we couldn't go through the drive through because of the travel trailer. And I went inside the store. I've probably told this before, but we went into the store and uh, everybody in there had their faces covered. They had plexiglass in front of them. There's no way, you know, they weren't protected if that's the way they felt like they needed to be protected. And the manager told me I had to wear a mask. And I said, I have medical condition, I can't wear one. I said, I just want a hamburger patty. I said, could, I could go stand outside the door, could you bring it to me if you're uncomfortable? I said, everybody in here has their faces covered, you've got plexiglass, I'm probably 12 feet away from you. No, that's, that's the rule. She said, you can go out and stand in the car lane and we'll serve you through that window. And it was 100 degrees outside. And I'm 72 years old. And she was gonna go let me stand in 100 degree heat outside in the car lane. She couldn't bring me a little hamburger patty for my puppies. I said, okay. I said, this is the last time I will ever enter a McDonald's again, ever. And I haven't. I won't buy anything from them. Um, you know, that's my principles. You get pushy with me, I'm gonna push back. And uh, dictatorial, I'll put it that way. And I understand if people don't feel safe, you know, this is, this used to be a free country. And uh, so we went to Home Depot. I remember the first time, I remember the first time going in re restaurants and seeing waiters and waitresses in masks. It was shocking to me. It was uh, extremely uncomfortable. I, I won't even eat in a restaurant where they make their uh, waiters and waitresses wear face coverings. It's ridiculous in the heat, in the hot kitchen, people are just huffing and puffing, you know, because they can't breathe. And it's torture, and it's done for a reason. So, um, but like I said, you know, everybody sh should have that freedom to choose, so. But I know a lot of people that did it because they didn't want to lose their jobs. That's a big, big deal, and I can understand that. People are still doing it because they don't want to lose their jobs. But anyway, I, uh, we went to Home Depot, and of course there's these great big signs out there, you have to do, wear face coverings, and so I, I just walked in, and so did my husband, and I, uh, nobody said anything, even though there's this huge sign outside, nobody said anything. So I was talking to a young woman who was helping us find what we were looking for, and uh, she pulled her face covering up. I said, you don't have to pull that up around me. And she pulled it back down and said, thank you. She said, I'm having a really hard time breathing. And um, she said, you know, our general manager of Home Depot told us, if people come in here, don't say anything to them. He said, we are Home Depot. We're not the MASK police. And I just really appreciated that. And that's one reason I'm doing this little video because I like Home Depot. That's where we buy most of our household stuff. So, thank you for listening. God bless.